Hello, everyone. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Nargis Banyasadi. I'm the Vice President of Informatics at Roche Sequencing. I'm very happy to be here in your gathering and speak to you today. My, the title of my talk is Conquering the Yet. I'm going to share some stories of my life journey with you about conquering the yet. These are, I'm sure, familiar stories for many of you. Stories of realizing the things that has, have not been done yet. The passion and motivation to go forward and do them and make a difference. The fear, the doubt, being scared of the unknown and your capabilities to do it. Can I do it? Will I fail? But still going forward and make a difference one step at a time. I grew up in Tehran, Iran. Uh, my childhood was very eventful. I survived the days after the revolution and eight years of war between Iran and Iraq. We survived that, thankfully. Um, then I went to college pursuing a degree in computer engineering. I was a good student. So my mother and my brother encouraged me to apply abroad for the graduate school. In particular, my brother one day said, make sure you apply to Stanford University. I've heard the weather is nice there and we have few relatives. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no way Stanford would let me in. The bar is very high. I don't know anyone at Stanford. So I just ignored his comments. Days passed and we were getting closer to the application deadline. So he reminded me again and pushed me to actually apply. So I just did so that he will not bug me anymore. And <laughs> then and I applied to a few more schools in uh, US and Canada. A few weeks and months uh, passed. Uh, some rejections, some admissions came by. And I got into a good school in Canada. I was very excited to go there. And then one evening, um, I was alone at home. My parents had gone out for a walk. And I'm in front of my computers looking at the emails. And I see an email from Stanford University admission office. I was first ignoring it. I was sure, pretty sure it's a rejection, rejection and looking at other things. But then out of curiosity, I opened the email to see how they are rejecting me. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> looking through the email, I'm not finding any word like rejection. It's congratulations and a new quarter begins. I was really shocked. And then in the next hour or two, when uh, I was by myself, in that dark evening, I had to face so many conflicting feelings. On one hand, I was so excited about this possible future, but at the same time, I was extremely scared because I thought it's just extremely challenging to be at Stanford and survive it, and what does it mean to be in Silicon Valley? Never had planned for that. My parents came back home and found me crying. My mom said, what has happened? So I got into Stanford. So they said, why are you crying? I said, because I'm so scared. And she said, you don't have to go. You have these other admissions. I said, yeah, but I'd like to go. So I decided to go forward. And I came here about 12 years ago, not knowing about so many good, good things that was waiting for me here. I was scared because I've never done that yet. Yeah. So I came here, and the very first few weeks at Stanford, the next big thing happened for me in life. I met this researcher at Stanford Genome Center. My field of study was computer engineering and electrical engineering. But in meeting that person, a very new area and door opened to me. His name is Mustafa Ronari. He talked to me about the future of biology and how all these sensor technologies make it possible to measure biology in all form, forms. And how we need data scientists, computer scientists, and engineers to come and build the technologies to analyze and make sense of biology. I was fascinated. And I walked out of that uh, meeting and thinking about, I want to dedicate my research to this field. Then the next six, seven years at Stanford, I embarked on a journey that was, was very rewarding. Um, I learned a lot about biology, statistics, and I brought so many different fields together. I had the opportunity to work with amazing researchers at Stanford and UC Berkeley across multiple de departments. And as I was getting closer to the graduation, I realized the gap in this industry. 
I realized that most people who study computer science or engineering, they end up following very traditional career paths. They either stay in academia, thinking about how to make faster, cheaper, smaller computers, or they end up working for a big, you know, uh, the tech giants. But I was seeing all the problems in the medical field, the healthcare, how um, you know, it is not really leveraging the technology, how it is not personalized, how many of the diseases have not been t treated or cured yet. So I decided to start a company in this field. And that was, again, very scary. I had not done that yet. It was my first job out of school, first time CEO, first time entrepreneur. And we called our company Bina. Bina in Hebrew and Persian means the insight and wisdom. Our goal was to create insight out of data. I was joined by people who believed in the idea, very good scientists and researchers that uh, knew our work. But I also had to face so many naysayers who were saying, we have not yet seen a successful bioinformatics company. This looks like a research project to us. The tech investors were saying, we don't know about biology, and the biotech investors were saying this looks like a very risky business model. But we ended up doing a lot of good things. So we raised money, grew our company, and had the opportunity to work with very good customers from research centers, hospitals, universities, and many pharma uh, companies as our customers. We built this uh, distributed software systems as well as machine learning and computational biology algorithms that help the cancer researchers uh, and other genomic researchers to really do their research much um, more effective and more accurately using genomic data sets. About two years ago, um, Roche, the largest biotech company in the field, they approached us and they were very interested to acquire a company to join them on a very new journey that they had started. Now, this was also something that had not done yet. And that was how we can bring DNA sequencing, which at that time was very much used in the research domain, to the clinical field, where every patient, every doctor can use the DNA sequence information of patients to come up with much more targeted, personalized, and effective treatments and diagnosis for them. So that was an extremely um, positive outcome and um, next step for our team. So we joined the Roche family about two years ago, and now we are part of um, the sequencing team. The t-shirt I'm wearing today says, Code to Cure. This is our uh, tagline at Roche uh, software team, and it's our invitation to all the software engineers and tech people to consider careers outside the traditional tech sector, because there are so many opportunities in the medical field to go and make a difference using technology. I should also share a personal story. Just days after I sold my company to Roche, when you think that it should be a time of just relaxation and celebration, my mom got very sick. And unfortunately, she got diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. During the last two years, our family came together and we fought this disease. Our mom was uh, our hero, uh, for sure. But unfortunately, we lost her a few weeks ago. I learned a lot in this um, fight against this disease, that how cancer, and I'm sure many other diseases, are not only affecting the patients, but they create so much suffering for their families, uh, friends, uh, co-workers, and communities. And it's such a noble cause to fight for. I also learned so many other things that have not done yet in the medical field that needs to change. I want to leave you with um, an invitation to all of us to look at our lives, look at our work, and see what are the things that have not done yet, been done yet. And really power through our fears and go out there, do them, and make a difference. And remind all of us that at the end, it's not our success or career path that will remain, but it is our impact in the world. Thank you.